Nyerong Tsulang Sotu. I was born in a refugee camp, a child of survivors from war who live with the trauma of losing family, losing home, and losing their identity. I was only a few months old when we came to the United States. In school, I didn't have a voice, didn't speak up much in class, but I had all these ideas in my head, and I had to write them down. The first story I ever wrote was of dinosaurs, imagination of prehistoric times, but eventually I composed poems to save my people's history. I found my voice in hip hop and spoken word poetry. For example, the melodic symbolic words vibrate through us, internally verbally crushing our senses, bursting to multiple tears felt from our own life years. We call this. Gutsia, divine dimensions of eternal stories, piercing the thorns throughout our times, letting it drip down puddles of endless emotions on a cloth we call bandao. Never had a country of our own, no place to call home. We come together for New Year's and soccer tournaments to create our own nation. The passion we have for our families, how we unite at times of devastation, it's sacred. You see, the sacrifices that were made so we could have a chance to make it, so we can even exist. I'll admit that my second tongue has been eclipsing my first since birth, or since third grade. Speaking of third grade, I want to share a story. Back in elementary school, right after class, a student came up to me and asked, "What are you?" I replied, "What do you mean? I didn't know I was something." It's the first time I felt othered. And then he asked, "I mean, are you like Chinese or something?" I replied, "I don't know, but let me get back to you tomorrow." <laughs> so, I went home that evening and asked my mom, "Mom, what am I? What are we?" She said, "Tu, you are Hmong." Thanks, mom. <laughs> Next day, I went to school. Right after class, same student came up to me, asked me, "So, what are you?" I replied, "I'm Hmong." He looked confused. Mom, what is that? Let me get back to you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Even though that other student was being a little tool for othering me, I utilized this experience to figure out what this Hmong thing is all about. So who am I? Gulun bei yao tu sai ko sheng li. You could call me Tu Sai. I am Hmong, a spoken word poet, storyteller, hip hop artist who rhymes in two tongues. I write lyrics for the elders to listen to, on beats for the youth to follow along. I'm also a teaching artist who works with students, providing opportunities to tell stories through poetry and song. But before I became who I am today. I was so lost. As a teen growing up, I couldn't speak my own language, and we couldn't communicate with the OGs. Oh yeah, Hmong people call our elders OGs. It stands for older generation. <laughs> But I felt so disconnected. I felt so hopeless back then, until I met my grandmother. At the age of 17, I found out that. Grandma was going to be sponsored over after a 10-year immigration process. My family went to meet her at the airport. My parents told us, "Go speak to Grandma, welcome her to the United States, give her a hug." I remember I couldn't say one word of Hmong to her, but I put my hand on her shoulder just like this, and then she put her hand over mine, and we walked out of that airport together. Grandma stayed with our family, and I really couldn't speak that much Hmong to her. But I knew a few words, such as "na ma," which means "eat food," and "wa chao," which means "thank you." But I loved listening to her storytelling, and little by little, I became more comfortable having conversations with her. As a college student, I would take the city bus to Minneapolis a few times a week just for classes. One day at the bus stop, an elder approached me. He asked. Hey, are you Hmong? I replied, 
Yeah, yeah, how'd you know? He explained to me that he's Ojibwe and that our cultures are very similar. For example, we live off the land, there are spiritual ceremonies, and the language was the lifeline of our cultures. We had a brief conversation, but I had to get on the next city bus. He chased after me and shouted, hey, there's one more thing I need to tell you. Make sure the youth hold on to their culture. If they lose their way and reject their roots, our cultures will die with our elders. I remember those words to this day. It inspired me to write my first spoken word piece called Generation After Generation. I started to perform at open mics, schools, community events. After one performance, an audience member came up to me and asked if I would visit her class of sixth graders. I figured it was a great opportunity to give back to students who grew up just like me. After that day, I would visit and facilitate artist residencies for schools for over 15 years. I brought grandma to a performance one day. Right after the show, she met me backstage. She waved to me and walked up to me. She asked, Do, how was the performance? I said, oh, it was good, Grandma. Yeah, I have something to tell you. I don't know what you said in English, but it looks like what you do is just like what I do. I found out that Grandma does this art form called Gutsia, a traditional art form that has been done for generations. I never understood what this art form was all about by the OGs until this very moment when Grandma said those words to me. I realized that what I do with hip-hop and spoken word honors what she does with Gutsia. It's a continuation of an oral tradition. It would be so epic to collaborate with Grandma. I asked Grandma, Hey, Grandma, Bo, would you collaborate and do your Gutsia with my spoken word poetry in English? Grandma replied, You just tell me when and where, and I will be there performing Gutsia with you. Grandma never had the opportunity to learn how to read or write. She never attended school. She was a farmer all her life, but she had this amazing ability to memorize poems that were passed on to her that were up to 10 minutes. We had a meal together one day, and she revealed that she can improvise lines that rhyme. She rattled off a few lines and ended her verse with, St. Paul. <laughs> she just gave a shout out to St. Paul. Wow, my grandma can freestyle. <laughs> <laughs> our duo was called Fresh Traditions. Right before one of our performances, grandma and I was rehearsing in the front seat. She asked me, what's that on your face? I told her, oh, those are the sunglasses. It helped me block out the sun, and sometimes I wear them when I get nervous on stage. She asked, can I try them on? I said, sure, sure. I handed grandma the glasses. I had no idea that would be the last time I would ever see those sunglasses again. <laughs> we performed at a few local venues, and eventually we performed out of state. She earned the name G-Dog after a performance when a rowdy part of the audience were barking at us because she had just freestyled for 44 stanzas when she was only supposed to do four. <laughs> Grandma went ham that day. <laughs> Grandma and I performed for 15 years. Unfortunately, she passed away in 2017, but her legacy lives on in these stories. And I started documenting adventures that we had to hopefully publish a memoir one day called My Grandma Can Freestyle. <laughs> I received an opportunity to travel to Thailand and stay in a Hmong village up in the mountains for about three months. I was in front of a bamboo house with a friend I just met, and we saw his mother walk through an open field. She was singing Gutsia, just like my grandmother does. I asked him, oh, what's your mom doing? Because there's no audience. He replied, my mom is healing from a past trauma. Creative expression could be a way of healing. 
I noticed that the elders in this village practiced their traditional arts, not just as a hobby or a passion. It was infused in their everyday lives. I guess that's why there's no word for art in the Hmong language. After that experience, I wanted my uncles who played traditional instruments to collaborate with me. While watching the clouds on a mountain village, I got inspired to write my first Hmong language hip hop song. Before that, I've been writing in English for over 10 years. It was an opportunity for me to relearn my language through lyrics, as well as share my songs with the diaspora of Hmong. Since I work with youth, I observe that there's this entire movement of hip hop artists who rap in the Hmong language. It's a dynamic way of connecting youth to our mother tongue. And to me, it was revitalizing our language. Then I did some research and I noticed that there were indigenous cultures in South America, Africa, all over the world who were also utilizing hip hop to revitalize their language. So there is value in honoring our elders. There is value in passing on knowledge to our youth. And these values can relate to any culture. Whether you are from the streets or whether you are from the mountains, it takes a village. And our village is worldwide. Because hip hop is not just music. It's an arts and global movement originated by disenfranchised youth from the South Bronx. Because of this youth movement, I created an arts-based curriculum that would focus on cultural identity and addressing issues in the Hmong community, which include honoring Hmong women, gender roles, remembering where you came from, and mental health, like generational trauma. If I could say anything to students, I would say don't be discouraged. It can be difficult to learn your culture and language. It takes time. And over the years, you can also learn your cultural identity. There are people that ask, what's the use of even learning your native language? And my reply to that is, your mother tongue nurtures a deep-rooted imagination. It breaks free an entire cultural worldview that values and validates your cultural perspective. It builds self-esteem and also pride in your cultural identity. I feel so honored to be an educator who has a strong heritage which translates to hip hop within a universal connection originated from grandma. Oral tradition is the heartbeat of the Hmong culture, reflects my people's soul, my spirit, the story of my grandmother, the rhythm of who I am. I hope you can feel it too. I know who I am. I know my life's purpose. It's a continuation of something sacred, and there's so much more. Grandma has made an impact on me, and her legacy lives on through these songs. Diaspora cipher, yes, yes, y'all. Haikando, Tongkandu, no. ตาหอบปอดาลอเชียร์ขอยาลอเซอร์ไฮกึเซียร์ไหนหลอมีหนูตัวลุมมองยอกาเซอร์ฟอร์ยอซึ่งกี้มั่วเซอร์เกงก่